So if you're watching this video, it's because you're trying to figure out how to make fields required to the user when they're creating the record, but read only after they've created the record. Well, we can actually do this with component visibility in Salesforce. So let me show you what I mean. Here we are in Salesforce. And the first thing I'm going to do is actually log in as a user who isn't a Salesforce admin, because I don't want them to have modify all permissions for all the fields, which will just defeat the purpose of what we're trying to achieve. So I'm going to search for a user here, and I'm going to log in as that user. Now that I'm logged in as that user, I'm going to navigate to the case object and I'm going to create a new case. Notice how the case origin field is editable for me. I can select the field and I can pick a value within the pick list values of this field, like email, for example, and I can hit save and that creates that record for me with the case origin email that I've just selected. But if you look at that field here on the right hand side, you can see that I can't edit this field anymore. Even if I click edit on the page, the field is just uneditable for me, it's essentially read only. So let me show you how I've managed to do this. First things first, I'm going to log out as this user so that I can go back into my system admin user. I'm going to go back to the case object, I'm going to click on a case, and I'm going to open up the lightning app builder. So now that we are in the lightning app builder, you can see that I have upgraded this to dynamic forms. And with that, we have access to the fields tab on the left hand side, which means that we can drag and drop fields onto different field sections of our page. So on the right hand side, we have a case information section. And within that section, we have the case origin field. What we also have, though, is another case origin field. So in case you didn't know, you can drag and drop the same field multiple times onto these different field sections of your page. And that's essentially what we've done here. So the first case origin field has a UI behavior of none, and this is our editable field. And the second case origin field has a UI behavior of read only. So this is the field that we display when the record has been created. So then the question is, how do we know when the record is being created versus when the record has been created? Well, we're using filters for that. So if I click on the first case origin field, the um, editable one, our filter essentially is the record created by username and the operator equal no value. In other words, the created by username is nothing. And the way that works is because when you're creating the record, you haven't actually created it yet. And so there is no created by username. The value is blank. And so this is the field that we see when we're creating the record. And so we use the same logic for the second case origin field. We just change the operator to not equal because after the record is created, we have created the record and therefore there is a created by username. So this is essentially how this works. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you an example using um, field sections just to give you a different use case of how you can actually utilize this. So the first thing I'm going to do is drag some field sections onto my page. I'm going to drag two field sections. The first field section I'm going to call editable case details. And the second field section I'm going to call read only case details. And so the idea behind it is that the sections will be the same. They will obviously have different component visibility filters, but they're going to have the same fields. One of them you're going to see when you're creating the record and the other one you're going to see after the record has been created. So now that I have my two sections, what I'm going to do is actually add the filter, the component visibility filter to the sections so that they're only visible at the right time. So I'm going to add a filter. I'm going to select record case number. And then for operator, I'm going to select equal. And then I'm going to leave this blank. Now for read only, I'm going to do the same thing, but I'm going to change the operator to not equal. And then I'm going to leave this value blank as well. So you don't have to use created by username if you don't want to. You can use something like case number because when you're creating the record, the record doesn't have a case number. But after the record has been created, it, the case number is then auto-generated for you because it's an auto number, then that field will be populated. So now what I want to do is actually add some fields to my new sections. So I'm going to select 
the type field, for example. And let's see, let's add another field. I'm going to add priority as well. Now, I want to add priority and type to my other component as well, because I want them to be the same. So I'm just going to tidy that up. Okay, so now we have editable case details field section, and we have read-only case details field section. They have the same fields within them, and they have the appropriate component visibility filter to only show when you're creating the case or after the case has been created. So now what I want to do is for my read-only case details, I need to select each field within the section and then change the UI behavior to read-only. So I'll select that for type, and then I'll do the same for priority. Now you do need to do this for each individual field. Unfortunately, you can't add this directly to the field section itself. You have to do it for all the fields within the section. But in terms of component visibility, you can put that on the field section itself and then it will apply for all the fields within that section. So now that we've done this, let's test it out. So I'm gonna hit save and then I'm gonna go back to the front end and again, I'm going to have to log in as another user. So I'll select my user here. And then I'm going to navigate to the case object and I'm going to click new. Now in this page, we can see the editable case details because we're creating the case and we need to be able to edit these fields. So I'm going to select the type and I have a priority of medium happy days. Now I'm going to save this case. Now that I've saved the case, we can see the read-only case details, not the editable case details. So essentially the component still exists, but it's invisible to us now because it doesn't meet the criteria. We have a case number, we've created the case, and therefore we cannot edit these fields anymore. Even if I click edit on the page, those fields are read-only. And so this is a really easy way for you to be able to make fields editable to your users when they're creating the record, but then read only after they've created the record. I hope you learned something new in this video. Please drop a comment down below and I'll see you next time.